This is lesson 7-4, which is graphing sine and cosine functions. Our essential question is, how can you identify key features of sine and cosine functions? This is an overview of what we're going to talk about. So we have y equals, oops, y equals a sine of bx. We can also write y equals a cosine of bx. So we're going to focus on the a and the b and how they affect your equation. So the amplitude of our graph is the absolute value of a. So we can see down here that our graph is oscillating around our midline, and it's going between, so this is 1, so this is going up to a half and down to negative a half. So our amplitude is 1 half. So you can see that in the equation up here. Our a value is 1 half. Okay. Our B value is going to tell us the period of the graph. So if we look at the graph here, we start at zero, we go up, down, and back to that same starting point. So the period is the amount of time it takes to get, or the amount of angle it takes to get back to the original starting point. So with this graph, we can see it's right here. This right here is pi, so this would be half a pi or pi over two. So our period is pi over 2, and our amplitude is a half. So the period comes from, we're going to take 2 pi, because that's the period of our parent function in this case, divided by our b value. So our b value was 4, so that's where the pi over 2 came from. And we're going to look more at that when we do some specific examples. Okay, so the first question is, what is the period of the graph of y equals sine of x? So I'm purposely doing the video this way because I wanted to illustrate how we go from the unit circle to the graph. So sine of x, remember, is talking about the y values. So if we think about on our unit circle, we start out right here, okay, at zero degrees, and that our y value right here would be zero. So then as we go around the unit circle, our y value gets bigger. It reaches our top point at pi over 2. Then it starts to get smaller. Now it's 0 right here at pi. Then it gets negative in the third quadrant down to 270 degrees, or 3 pi over 2 is at its lowest point. And then it goes back to 0. And that is 1 period of pi, or of sine, okay? So 2 pi radians gets us around the unit circle, and we can keep going. So this kind of shows us how that graph is developed. So it's taking from the unit circle, we're going, our y values are going to give us the graph of sine. Okay, so if we go back to our notes here, what is the period of the graph of y equals sine of x? So if we think about that illustration we just looked at, it's we're going to reach the same point as soon as we've gone around the unit circle. So the period of the graph of y equals sine of x is just 2 pi. Okay, and then it says what are other key features of the graph of y equals sine of x? So if we go over here, so key features. So we have a midline at 0. Okay, our graph is going, because again, we're talking about y when we're talking about sine, so it's going between a positive one value and a negative one is our y values. Um, and we can see, so, and the period, again, we talked about is 2 pi, amplitude is 1. So those are the, our key features that we're talking about. So our a value is 1, our b value is also 1. So the A value tells us our amplitude is 1, and the period is 2 pi. So that's how we get, so this is our equation for the parent function of sine. Okay, so example 2 asks us to identify the amplitude and period of y equals 3 cosine of x. So you can see the blue graph is just y equals cosine of x. And the orange graph is y equals 3 cosine of x. So the only difference between those two graphs is the 3. And that 3 is going to change the amplitude. So you can see on our graph that it's going to change, that it goes up to positive 3 and down to negative 3. So the amplitude 
would be 3, and the period is still 2 pi. Does not change the period by putting that 3 in front of cosine. Okay, and then part B says, what are the amplitude and period of y equals negative sine of 2x? So this is where we have to be careful. The amplitude is, if we look at our a value here, we have a negative number out there. That does not change. Remember, the amplitude is the absolute value of a. So the absolute value of negative 1 is still 1. So the amplitude in this case is still 1. That negative is going to tell us that we have a reflection over the x-axis. Okay? And then the period. The period will be different on this one. So to find the period, we take 2, by, 2 pi divided by b. So our b value in this case is 2. So 2 pi divided by 2 is just going to be pi. So that means that the period in this case is going to be shorter. So you're going to have a higher frequency of the um, function. And we'll talk about frequency here in the next example. Okay, so example three is to graph um, a sine of bx and y equals a cosine of bx. And we're going to talk about what is the frequency. So the frequency is the reciprocal of the period. So if we're finding the period, we're going to take 2 pi over b. And in this case, our b is 1 half. So be careful here because sometimes we see 2, pi, two divided by a half and we think, oh, that's 1, but it's not. Think about how many one-half pieces fit into two, and it's four. So this would be four pi. So that means that the frequency would be one over four pi. It's the reciprocal of the period. So that means that you have one cycle of your graph in four pi angles. So this graph would be more spread out. Okay, you would have a horizontal stretch instead of a horizontal shrink. Okay, so that is the basics of our sine and cosine graphs. Let me know if you have any questions.